Welcome back. If you're new here, I'm Dan. I like to print stuff. I'm printing four up books right now. Uh, and this is the first I encountered this with the 3070 on 13 by 19. You won't be able to see it, but my registration marks on this side are dead on front to back. And over here, they're off like a 16th of an inch. Uh, and it's, it's not moving, but uh, what it is, is the magnification. Uh, so it's not quite um, correct this way or this way. So I want to add a 16th of an inch and add a 32nd of an inch. So this uh, book ends up being exactly six by nine. So the back is actually pretty close, but the front needs to be uh, blown up a little bit, zoomed. Uh, so let me show you how to do that real quick. Let's get these printing. Okay, so I haven't done this on the 3070 yet, so chances are my first try isn't going to be perfect. But uh, I do do this in paper settings. My paper's in tray 5, it's 1319. I go to chain set, change set, both sides adjust, and we'll do the front side first. So the vertical and horizontal zoom is up here, and uh, I calculated that uh, I want to add a percent in this direction and half a percent left to right. So vertical, uh, we're going to do 1%. We'll see, see what that does at a half percent here. It might actually be a lot. Uh, but I'm, only, I'm just going to do one side at a time here. So overwrite that. And let's print one out. Whoa. That might have been too much. Eh, I don't know. It's just... It's like a 64th more than 6 inches wide. I'm happy with. Shoot, that's right on at nine. That's pretty much exactly what it needed. That's just a hair more than six. That's a little bit more than nine. Maybe I'll actually take a half percent out of the back side. Okay. I'm actually surprised. That's pretty darn good for a first try. Uh, back. Horizontal. Minus. Half. I'm going to go ahead and overwrite. Close out of that. And you know what? I should also adjust the front to back registration in that same window. Let's do that, because then it'll be dead on for the next job. Third time's charm, that's right on. Let's run them. Oh yeah, spoiler alert. I'm the type of person, I like to make do with what I have, and I believe that you can do anything if you put your mind to it. And uh, I like contraptions to make machines do what I need them to do. So, a little bit of a contraption over there. I don't know if you can see that. We'll see if it'll work. I'm gonna bring you guys along. It'll be a learning experience, at least. Somebody mentioned they didn't know how to do slip sheets. So I'll show you how I do that. Uh, you can do it two ways. You can either go into finishing here uh, and they have a slip sheet 
and you can check it you know before every copy uh, same as job or you know you can define a separate one I don't use that uh, what I do is in media I just uh, add an insert if you click that you know before or after first page last page and then select the media that you have loaded in the machine uh, and uh, and that'll do it and it, what you have to do is uh, you know program in uh, 12 by 18 slip sheet and you know put that in one tray as a paper and then pull from there so hope that answers your question hey, look at these things these are big old bruisers it's not that often that a book is thick enough that I can just pull the slip sheet off before I even cut it Gonna be a big book. I'll be honest, I'm kind of anticipating problems, but maybe I'll be surprised. This will be the largest book that I bound that I bind on this machine. Uh, The old CP board binder that I used to have wouldn't have done this large of a book. It maxed out at like an inch and three quarters, and this is two and a quarter. So, I'm anticipating issues with binding, uh, and actually, probably more so with trimming, because uh, when you have a book this big, uh, you have to be careful not to smush the spine when you cut with the clamp. If the clamp pressure is too high, it's going to wrinkle your spine and it looks, looks bad. So, I mean, worst case scenario, I'll have to trim them all by hand on this cutter. Best case scenario, it'll all be fine. But I'm anticipating at least a few books that get wasted in the process of getting all the settings correct. Okay, to make a long story short, to save money on shipping, but to get free shipping, uh, I started buying a 12 and a half inch wide laminate instead of 11 and a half inch wide. So I had to start using uh, either a 12 and a half or a 13 inch wide piece of paper because there needs to be a little bit of a lip on the edge in order for the cutter to work. Anyways, I got 50 book covers that I need to laminate and the paper is 12 inches wide. My film is 12 and a half. So what I'm going to try and do is slit the film to 12 as it's running and uh, so I can laminate this paper, which as far as I can tell is going to work, uh, but well, we'll see. Okay, so here's my contraption. It's just two C-clamps, utility knife. Should be able to... Yes, that screws in my way. I don't think that's gonna be subject to a lot of strain, so I don't think it has to be that strong. What I probably should have done is swap that blade out just to make sure it's what I as sharp as possible. So let's inch that forward a little bit, see what happens.
Oh, it might not work. I can't believe it's working. I didn't think it was gonna work there at first, getting the knife to cut, but getting a, a gentle angle on that knife uh, is what did it. But uh, it's running just fine. It slits it, takes it under that pool roller, and then right into the vacuum cleaner. And it all looks fine. Got laminate past my crop marks looking really good. That's fun. Hey, d &K, I like your machines. You can steal my idea if you want. Pretty good. Should I speed it up? Uh, 
I don't know if I want to. There's a time and a place for that. I don't know that this is it. Maybe just a little bit. You know, this is working so well. I'm trying to think of a more permanent way to do this. I'd ha have to put some sort of a take-up reel or something on here. Unless I could just put a big box underneath and maybe wrap the film around this roller and just let it drop right straight down. That would probably actually work. I don't know. This is fun though. I like this stuff. You know, but even just using the vacuum cleaner, that works really well. I don't know if I want to run it for hours on end. Probably burn through a motor doing that. But now I know for once in a while projects like this, this is how you can do it. There's gonna be a 100 foot long piece of laminate in that shop back when we're done. <laughs> There's a piece of tape or film on this. I don't know when I put that on there, see if I can't get it off with a razor. Got it. Well, now you know, it can be done. I'm glad I could make it work with just three C-clamps. That's all I got. Well, now that I got the shop back out, might as well clean up a bit. Gotta be careful that you don't break anything when you're cleaning because there's a lot of sensitive sensors in some of these. binding really thick books like this you got to keep an eye on the adhesive because you go through it like five times as fast as you typically do have got uh, evenly distributed on there and the spines are pretty square um, so I'm gonna trim those down on the guillotine won't bore you with that um, I'll probably end up doing two at a time in there cutting uh, the tops of them off rotating the bottom and then turning them upside down 
and sliding them in there to cut the back off or the bottom edge. Box them up, ship them out. Had some extra piece of wood, put a little shelf over here. Got the stuff off the ground and put up there and some uh, the cutter sticks for the three knife are over there now. It's gonna be real nice, clean up a little bit. But I was thinking, I probably said this before, but it is so critical that you keep your workspace as clean as possible. Uh, number one, it's good to keep it clean because of uh, sensors and things like that. Dirt causes problems. But uh, number two, it just makes you feel good for crying out loud. I mean, it's, it uh, makes you proud of your workspace. And if stuff is clean and where you need it, when you need it, you're more productive. So clean your workspaces. Uh, the other thing that I was thinking about that I really need to emphasize is, you know, with the laminator and slitting that film and getting it to work so I could laminate the 12 inch wide here. Just remember, you can do it. When you hit that brick wall, I couldn't get that knife to start slitting. You know, I could have gave up and said, you know, forget it, I'll send these out and get somebody else in there. No, don't take no for an answer. Turn, you know, tell that voice inside you to shut up and push through. So hopefully that can be an encouragement to everybody out there. Alrighty, see ya.